All right, y'all. So what is up, Africana fam? It's your girl, Young Africana, back at it again with a banger and a look. Y'all see this mullet? Come on. It's giving 80s baddie, okay? And I haven't seen no dark skin girls do it, so I had to do it one time for the dark skin girlies. So if y'all want to see how I did this hair and makeup, then keep on watching. All right, y'all. So starting off with the hair, I did get some hair from the beauty supply store, and this is the Empire brand bundle. I have the 613 and 12 inch. I got the Janet Collection 28 piece in 1B, and then I also got the Empire bundle in natural black color. And this is the color that I used to dye the 613 hair. It's the Kiss Temptation in the color neon orange. And now on to coloring the 613 hair. I'm going to go ahead and fill up this bucket with some hot water. And I am now going to take the bundles and have them doubled and cut just a piece of it. I'm not going to use the whole entire bundle of the 613. And we got our gloves to protect our hands. So now I'm going in with the neon orange and I'm just, you know, putting that in the water. And I'm going to use my hands just to mix up the mixture making sure that there's no dye flying around in there that's like you know clumped up or anything and then afterwards i'm going to dip the hair until i get the color payoff that i am looking for in the hair But now on to making the wig. I did get this mesh stocking dome cap and I put it on my head and I'm using this metallic silver sharpie just to line right behind my ear. So that is my guideline for where the longer bundles are going to be at. So literally right before my ear, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of carve out across from ear to ear. And I'm just trying to make sure it's precise as possible and like one side isn't lopsided or anything. And I'm just gently just dragging that across my dome cap. And this is how it should look. Again, you want to make sure that the outline is right before your ears. Now you want to make sure you get a dome head that fits the circumference of your head. Mine is a 23.5 inch because I got a big old head. But to protect my dome head, I'm going to use just this plastic shower cap. And I'm going to T-pin it down with some T-pins of course. And I'm just going to smooth it down just so like there's no air bubbles or anything in the shower cap. And now I'm going to go ahead and place the dome cap onto the mannequin head. You want to make sure that the front is at the front and the back is at the back, okay? So now that I got it situated, I'm now going to go ahead and drag out the nape area just a little bit down just so it can actually fit the size of my head and not have it right up. Now using that same metallic silver sharpie, I'm going to go ahead and start outlining my tracks and where i want to lay my tracks and this is perfect for beginners if you're not sure exactly where you want to outline your tracks and for the back since we're using regular tracks you want to make sure that they're about an inch apart not too far apart but not too close together either since we're only working with one bundle and how i am outlining the lines is i'm going in kind of like a u shape and you want to make sure that you start above the actual spandex part of the cap that is very important because you want it to actually stretch so again i'm just doing a u pattern up until i get to the top and once i kind of run out of space for doing a u i'm now going to go ahead and just draw some lines horizontally until i meet the top and this is how it should look you should have nice smiley slash u shaped lines and then some horizontal ones up top so now onto the front area, I'm now going to go ahead and start side by side. As you can see, as I'm getting closer to the edge of the cap, I'm kind of like slanting it upwards. So it's almost at a, like a diagonal in a sense. And you want to make sure that you have like a slight curve just so it can kind of fit the curves of your head as well. So I am curving it and I'm using those two threaded lines as like my guideline of where I will want to stop from side to side. So like I said, I started curving them and I did the other side off camera and now onto the bang area. I am now going to go ahead and just draw some lines horizontally. Now as I start getting closer to the top as well too with the horizontal lines, I am then going to start curving them at the edges 
which would then kind of form a circle and that will be our closure area so you will kind of see once like you know this fast forwards i'm going to start curving it like so and it's going to create this closure effect which is you know what we want you want to be able to have an end to your wig <laughs> So just going to go ahead and just curve it up until we get like this nice, beautiful circle. And this guide isn't the most perfect. This is my first time doing this. So it isn't the most perfect, but for the most part, it will suffice, especially for a beginner. But now onto the tracks. I'm going to start off with the 20 inch track, the 1B one. And I'm using my Salon Pro Super Hair Bond, the 30 second glue. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start measuring my tracks and cutting them. And then I'm going to use my flat iron just to kind of like flatten out the curled ends. I don't know if you ever unraveled bundles before, but like it kind of curls at the ends and you want to make sure that it's straight so like the glue can actually stay. And for the first track, I am going to double it. And then for the rest of the tracks, I'm going to single it. So I apply the glue on the track area and then I'm going to go ahead and place it on the line and then use my blow dryer on the hottest setting just to press it down. And you want to make sure that you're pressing your tracks down while you're blow drying it just so it can adhere to the dome cap. And the process is pretty repetitive. I'm going to be doing this throughout the entire head. Again, you want to just make sure you're smoothing it out. Make sure you're putting the glue on the tracks, smoothing it out, and blow drying on the hottest setting close to the tracks. And like I like to have my blow dryer close to the track just so it can kind of dry faster. And this process is pretty fast. You'll start getting the hang of it and like the momentum of it once you start going upwards. And as you guys can see, I am now at the halfway mark. And this is super dope for people that don't want to sew as well. I'm not really a sewer anymore, to be honest. And yeah, I feel like this was super quick. But yeah, this is the back part. As y'all can see, it's looking good. And now onto the 27 piece. Now we're onto the sides, right? We're starting off with the sideburns. It comes with three pieces. There's a short one, a medium one, and the longest one. I am starting off with the shortest one first for my tendrils slash my sideburns. And I'm going to go ahead and do that up until I get about like halfway up to the side part. I don't know if that makes sense. But I'm not going to finish off the entire side with that one length. I'm going to just go ahead and go up halfway. And you want to make sure that these tracks are actually closer together. So although my guide is about an inch apart, you want to make sure that you're kind of filling in those gaps in between because you do not want your shortest parts to be gappy, especially when you're cutting it because then you can actually see those gaps. So... What I did is I will kind of fill in the gaps in between the lines just so that they are nice and close together. So they are going to be closer together than the back. And once I'm done halfway, I am now going to go ahead and start with the medium length one. As you guys can see, that one is longer. And I'm going to use the medium length one to finish off the sides. And this is how it is looking so far. We have the shortest at the bottom and then the medium up top to finish off the sides. And now onto the bang, I am using the longest length in there. And like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and use the guideline, but also fill in between the guidelines just so that it is not gappy at all. And you're just doing the same process. You're going to go ahead and glue, place it down, and then blow dry. Now onto my patch, right? So we got the patch going on. I'm putting it on and I'm only doing it on one side. So I did it on half of the bang area. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it as well too, just so it can match the length of the bang. 
and then I'm going to continue on with the black. But now that we're on to the circle part, now I'm going to literally wrap around the tracks and glue a long piece, piece of track and just kind of go around in a circle in a circle until it gets small enough. And luckily for the 28 piece, it comes with an actual closure, so you don't actually have to close it yourself. We thank God for working smarter and not, not harder, okay? Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and close that off. And I'm using the closure piece, this is how it looks. And I'm just putting a whole bunch of glue on there so it doesn't come off. Because the last thing you need is the top of your wig to come off. That's kind of crazy. And this is how your wig should look. As y'all can see, it's giving, I fell in love with an emo girl. Yeah, it, it is giving that, I'm not gonna lie. And as I put on the wig, I realized, I'm like, um, this is giving boo. And I wasn't really feeling the orange. I'm not gonna front, I was trying my best to work it out, but it was giving scary beebs, and I wasn't feeling that at all. So right now, I'm just kind of like, you know, testing it out. I don't know if y'all can see in my face, but I'm like, mmm. I don't know, get somebody else to do this because mm, this ain't it. So I ended up actually taking out the orange piece because it just wasn't giving for me. I felt like the contrast was a bit off and it just didn't give. So I took it off and I went ahead and dyed um, another piece of the blonde hair that I had because I had some left over. And I used the Adore dye in the color Sky Blue to dye it. And as y'all can see, like, it just looks so much better. And I just went ahead and just glue in that piece that was missing, my little ball spot, <laughs> and blow dry that down. And I also just went ahead and cut it to be the length of the bang. And as y'all can see, it's looking way better. Like, I feel more like a rock star with this. The other one was giving boo, and I just wasn't feeling the contrast between the black and the orange. But yeah, this was way better. I loved it, actually. So I just went ahead and like, you know, styled it up or whatever. And now I'm going to go ahead and kind of cut my hair into three, like how the front is already cut off. So we got the two sides and our bang area. So I'm just kind of separating the two before I start going in and shaving off the hair because this is giving Scary Bieber, okay? And we're not trying to give that. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just use my um razor comb i'm using the one with a shorter guard i believe um where the blade is closer and i'm just gently just gliding it across like my hair i'm trying to thin out the hair and not make it look as wiggy because like the sides are super full and i want it to look very flush and flat to my head And with this, you're just going to have to really just play around with it to your liking. Take your time. Please take your time, especially if you're a beginner. Um, I'm used to kind of just playing around my hair at this point, even though this is my first time doing a mullet. But, you know, I'm just kind of used to playing around with this. So just play around with it. Take your time. Cut slowly. And cut responsibly. And you should be fine. Just kind of just play around with it. But now that I kind of have, like, my base cut right because we're going to cut more i'm now going to go in with my nairobi setting lotion and i'm just going to apply that on the sides only just so i can have it nice and flat like you want the sides to be flat for your mullet and this just kind of helps mold the hair into place this is how the ogs kind of do it this is how they do their finger waves and everything and you want to make sure that it dries completely you could use wrapping paper but i didn't have that so i just let that be you know completely you know just i'm free balling it you know i'm just i'm letting it out i'm letting it dry and stuff and i'm kind of forming it and i'm just you know playing around with the mousse and everything and just let it dry completely before we continue on with the styling on the sides or even cutting more on the sides so now that it's pretty much dry it's like 85 percent dry i went in with my clippers i didn't know what the heck i was doing with these i'm not gonna lie i was just winging at this point i'm not gonna front but <laughs> i just went in with my shears instead to kind of clean up my mess and i kind of want that like you know almost kind of like that sharp hairline-ish type effect that you get 
with like you know a pixie and everything so i'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of cut that with my shears and once that's done i'm just gonna go ahead and place the wig onto the mannequin head and i'm going to cut some slight layers into the back of the head just so that when i'm curling it it actually has some balance and some value so now i'm going in with my babyless one and a half inch barrel curling iron and i'm just gonna go ahead and curl away from my face and i'm gonna do that all the way up until i get to the top of where the long hair ends And now on to makeup. What I'm doing right now is I am setting my eyelids with my Huda Beauty loose powder in the color Cinnamon Bun. And I'm just pressing that into my eyelids just so that my eyelids can stay matte because there's going to be a huge portion of my eyelids that is just going to be bare. So onto eyeshadow, I am creating this wing with my um, MAC shader brush and I'm going into the Juvia's Place the magic palette and I'm using the color Yehide and then I'm going into the warrior 2 palette from Juvia's Place and I'm using the color Kafuru just to kind of like blend out that brown and then onto the blue I'm using Juvia's Place culture palette and the color Shakira and I'm putting those three colors right next to each other to kind of have like a try ombre in a sense between the three colors and now i'm just using my makeup wipe just to kind of clean up that wing just so i could have like you know a sense of where this wing is going because i had no idea what i was doing y'all i'm not gonna front i was just winging this entire thing and i'm just using um the color afro beats in my tear ducts now on to complexion i'm using my urban decay all nighter primer to prime my face and then I'm using my Lancome Tint I Doll Foundation in the color 560 mixed with the Born This Way Too Faced Concealer in the color Coco as my foundation color. And I feel like these two mixed together just gives me the absolute coverage and color that I need. Like it's a perfect match. But now onto highlighting, I am using my Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in the color Toffee. And I'm just highlighting my T-zones and also underneath my eyes as well just to give myself a brightened look and a non-flat look because we are not trying to have a flat face and look like Mr. Potato Head, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and just highlight everywhere that I want to highlight at. And on to blending, I'm using my Ulta Beauty Precision Foundation Brush just to blend out my concealer. And I like to save under my eyes for last. And I'm just going in with my Morphe buffer brush just to buff out my nose highlight. Now for contour, I'm going to go ahead and use my Milk Makeup contour stick in the color space and let me know if you guys want an updated contour video i think i'm going to do it anyways but um, i haven't had one in like two years now so i'm definitely going to do an updated one on how to contour like a pro for beginners so comment down below contour me please down below in the comments if y'all want a contour and highlight video for beginners um but right now i'm just going in with my real techniques um buffer brush and i'm just going to buff out that contour and I've just went ahead in with my morphe continuous setting spray just to kind of set everything into place before I apply the powder now onto powder I'm using my Huda Beauty loose powder in the color cinnamon bun and I'm just using that underneath my eyes this is probably the best powder I have used in life okay this is my favorite setting powder all right so go ahead run don't walk and let her know that i sent you to sephora also to go and get it <laughs> and right now i'm just using this little puffer brush just to you know do my thing with my highlighting and on to contour i'm using my previous place bronzer palette in the color deep top 
because we are dark over here and we love it over here okay um but <laughs> on to blush i went ahead into my juvia's place blush palette in the color volume five and then on to eyes i am using this blue liner from juvia's place and it's in the color royal and i'm going back in with that dark navy blue that i use on the outer corners of my wing as a shaded color underneath my eyes and for my tear ducts, I did went ahead and use the color Calabash in the Culture Palette just to kind of like, you know, add on to the blue because I feel like the blue is just too much. And now to press in my face to kind of bring my face together, I'm using my L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation in a Powder. Powder. <laughs> that was a mouthful. And it's in the color Deep Amber. And back into the blush, I just went ahead and reapplied that blush. And I'm going back in with Kafu just to apply that into like my eyebrows and into my contour just to kind of give me some dimension. I feel like this really brought my look together actually. And I'm going in with my Maybelline um, lip liner. This is a black lip liner that I got. And I'm just going to go ahead and just line my lips. And I lined that on top of with my Juvia's Place lip liner in the color Cola. And now for the lip gloss, I'm using my NYX Butter Gloss in the color Vanilla Cream Pie. And now setting my face with my Urban Decay All Nighter Spray, I'm going to go ahead and press it in with my foundation brush. And then I'm just using So Glazed from the Juvia's Place Lip Gloss line. And now I got the wig on my head and it is giving a rock star baby. And I really, really, actually really like this look. It came together. I'm super happy that I took out that orange, <laughs> that orange strip from the hair. Because I don't think the orange was really going to give as much as the blue. Like the blue was really giving electrified looks. So right now I'm just playing around with it, as y'all can see. And these are the finished results. I hope y'all enjoy this video. Go ahead and give me a big like, uh, a subscribe. It also click that bell to get notified of when I drop more creative videos like this. I'm definitely going to be getting more in my creative bag. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Whoa.